Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. So in this video, we will set up our architectural skeleton of our app. If you don't know what that is, that is just the basic structure of our project architecture. So we will create our view models, our repository, our fragments and so on, so that we just have that basic foundation we can build on later. So the first thing I want to do here is I actually want to set up our logging library timber because as you can see we currently use that standard log which we don't want here i want to use that logging library since it makes our life a little bit easier because we don't need tags all the time so let's actually go inside of our base application class for that because we only need to set that up once during the application's lifetime and we want to do that in the onCreate function of our application class. So just when our application is created, when our app launched. And in here we just want to write timber.plant um, and we want to plant a debug tree. So that just enables debug logging with the timber library. Then as a next step, I want to create our main repository let's do that in its separate package let's create a package for that called repositories in this project we will only have a single repository but i just like to create a package for that in case you have some more repositories then i would always use that package structure just for organizational purposes so let's create that package and inside of that repositories package we create a new kotlin class called main repository select class here and create it and the job of our main repository now is to provide the functions of our database. So the functions we provided in our DAO object for our view models later on. So we will need the DAO object inside of our main repository. And we will get that by simply injecting it with dagger hilt. Because in the last video, we set up our app module class here. And you can see we have that function that provides that run DAO so we can simply go inside of our main repository and inject it and we can not only inject variables like we did it in the last video inside of the main activity where we had that late init var here that works but what also works is if we just annotate the constructor of that main rep repository with add inject and then we write constructor and now we can just pass all the parameters we want here and if we have provide functions for those, then they will simply be injected. So we will have our run DAO here. So val run DAO, which is of type run DAO. And since we provided that inside of our app module, Dagger will do the job here. And inside of the class body now, we want to call the functions of our run DAO and simply provide them for our view models. So first of all, that will be a suspend function, which will be executed inside of a coroutine for inserting a run so insert run then we will pass the run we want to insert in our database as a parameter and we will set that function to run dow dot insert run and we pass our run here then we can copy that function paste it below call this function delete run and we call delete run of course and the rest will just be a whole bunch of copy and paste because we will have a function to get all runs sorted by date. Doesn't take any parameters and we will set it to run DAO dot get all runs sorted by date. And you might wonder now why that is not a suspend function. And the reason for that is that we want to get some runs and that function here returns a live data object and live data is asynchronous anyways. So we don't need to execute this function inside of a coroutine because our main goal with that is actually to execute our functions asynchronously and live data does that by default here. Then we can copy that function and paste it, I think four times for each function we have here. We have the function get all runs sorted by distance. Replace it with get all runs sorted by distance here. We have a function to get all runs sorted by time in millis. Replace this with time in millis. Then we have a function to get all runs sorted by average speed. Replace this with average speed, not total average speed. Instead, get all runs 
sorted by average speed. And finally, we have a function to get all runs sorted by calories burned. And also replace this one. And now that's not it. We also need the functions for our statistics fragments, so our total statistics. That will be a function get total average speed is equal to rundow dot get total average speed function get total distance is equal to rundown dot get total distance function get total um, calories burned rundown dot get total calories burned and finally the last one is function get total time in millis and set it to rundown dot get total time in millis of course but that's it now for our repository. So if you're not really familiar with MVVM architecture, the job of the repository is just to collect the data from all of our data sources. So in this case, we only have our room database as a data source, but if we would need access to an API too, then we would also get the data from that API inside of our repository. So the next step is to create our view models, our two view models, our main view model and our statistics view model. I will create a new package for that, which I will call UI. And I will drag our main activity inside of that UI package. Click on refactor. And then I will create another package inside of that UI package, which I will call view models. And inside of that view models package, we will create our Kotlin class main view model and select class of course. And the job of our main view model is now to collect the data from our repository and provide it for all those fragments that will need this main view model. And that means we need an instance of our main repository inside of our main view model here. So we need to pass that instance to the constructor. And normally we would write at inject here, constructor, and simply have that main repository here. And of course, let that class inherit from view model. But usually we cannot create an instance of a view model that easily. And also Dagger can't do this that easily. Because when we want to pass parameters to a view model, then you probably know we need to create a view model factory for that. And in the old Dagger, that was super complicated to inject stuff into view models that needed a huge workaround. But thanks to Dagger Hilt, that is now actually much easier because Dagger Hilt will manage all that view model factory stuff and that injection stuff behind the scenes for us. And the only thing we need to do here is not to use add inject. Instead, we want to use add view model inject. And that is now everything we need to do to inject stuff into view models that is very easy. But maybe you have noticed that we inject our main repository here inside of our main view model. But if we take a look in our app module, we don't have a function that provides our main repository. But I will tell you that will still work. And the reason for that is if we take a look in our main repository, you can see that requires an instance of our run DAO object. And since we know or Dagger knows how to create that run DAO object, you can see we have a provide function for that. It automatically also knows how to create our main repository because the only parameter that main repository needs is that run DAO. So we don't explicitly need to define a provides function for our main repository. Instead, we can just leave it like that and simply inject our main repository as it is and everything will work fine. So let's actually do the same for our statistics view model because as you probably know, we will have two view models in this app. And for that, we can simply use our main view model, press Control C and Control V to duplicate it and name it statistics view model. Press OK. And everything is actually fine. Our two view models will both use the same repository. So we can just leave this class as it is for now. And then as a last part of this tutorial, we will create all of our fragments and inject our view models in those. So let's create another package for that in our UI package, call it fragments. And inside of this fragments package, we will create a new Kotlin class. First for the run fragment, select class here, of course, which will inherit from fragment. And we can simply pass the layout ID inside of the constructor of fragment here. So r layout dot need to import r here. 
r.layout dot fragment run here. And then we can copy that run fragment class and paste it again for the statistics fragment. And we replace the layout ID with fragment statistics. Then we can paste it again for our settings fragment. Fragment settings here. We will have a tracking fragment, of course, which is probably our most important fragment in this app. Replace the layout ID with fragment tracking. And finally, our last fragment, which is our setup fragment. And replace it with fragment setup. And actually, we will only need our view models inside of our run fragment, our statistics fragment and our tracking fragment because inside of the settings fragment and setup fragment we won't have any data that we need to save for um, a screen rotation for example so we don't need a view model there because the settings data won't be saved to our database instead we will use shared preferences later on anyways let's actually go back to our run fragment and inject our view model here and we have to do that differently, so we cannot simply write add inject here to get our view model from Dagger. Instead, what we need to do is we need to write private val um, view model. We need to specify the type of that, which is main view model in this case. And now to get that view model from Dagger, we simply write by view models. And we need to import that. So because Dagger manages all those view model factories for us behind the scenes, we can simply write by view models and Dagger will select the correct view model for us and assign it to this view model variable here. Then we can actually copy that line, go inside of our statistics fragment, paste that line and replace main view model with statistics view model. Because instead of this statistics fragment, we of course want to have that statistics view model. And we also want to open our tracking fragment. Here we will need the main view model again. So that line is actually fine like that. And what I almost forgot is that whenever we need to inject stuff using Dagger Hilt inside of our Android components, so in this case a fragment, we need to annotate that fragment with add Android entry point, just as I showed you in the last video. So let's do that for our statistics fragment too at Android entry point and for our run fragment. That is everything we need to set up to be able to inject our view model inside of our fragments. So let's actually run our app and see if it doesn't crash because that would mean that our injection works perfectly fine and as you can see it does. And I know all this foundational stuff is very boring in the beginning but it is really necessary and as I said, in the next video, we will go on with the navigation. We will set up the whole navigation in that video. And after that, we can finally start with our location tracking. So if you like this video, then make sure to subscribe to my channel if you didn't already. And comment below what you think about this video. Have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.